Hello, thank you for clicking onto this video and welcome to the Hamamatsu video channel. Many of you in the photonics industry may be familiar with us for our famous detectors and while we will continue to manufacture and supply these detectors, we also wanted to introduce you to our lineup of spectrometers and spectrum sensors containing these same detectors. Our spectrometers cover the whole gamut from UV to the near infrared. From our gratings-based options to our interferometer-based options, our spectrometers provide the accuracy, resolution, and sensitivity users require, and all in form factors that are magnitudes smaller than benchtop spectrometers. We manufacture our own high-throughput transmissions gratings, so every transmission grating and image sensor that goes into each spectrometer is manufactured, put together, and inspected to be sure that it receives our seal of approval. So whether you're looking to measure sugar content in fruit or distinguish between pharmaceutical components through their sirs raman response, our compact spectrometer sizes paired with their high quality performance make these options beneficial for users looking to take their measurements out from the lab and onto the field. Today, we'll be presenting one of our spectrometer options. We'll share an example test setup, run through some sample data to give you an idea of what type of analysis is possible using our standard evaluation software. We'll introduce some alternative evaluation software options and discuss possible applications using this spectrometer. Included in Hamamatsu's lineup of spectrometers, we have the microspectrometers, ideal for handheld implementations. Shown here is the award-winning microspectrometer sensor head. Contained within this compact, hermetically sealed metal package is a grading chip, a high sensitivity 288 pixel CMOS active pixel sensor, suitable for measurements in the visible to the near infrared range and showcasing a typical resolution of 10 to 12 nanometers. Since power and readout electronics are not designed into the sensor head, we offer a value added solution in the form of a microspectrometer module. This is the C13985-20. This option is ideal for handheld implementations in OEM applications such as colorimetry, fluorescence measurements, food inspection, point of care, and water quality monitoring. This module consists of the microspectrometer sensor head with SMA connector and driver circuit with micro USB interface. With wavelength calibration coefficients built into the board, users spend less time in startup using this module rather than the sensor head alone. Microspectrometer module users also benefit from additional software support in the form of a complete software development kit offered with the standard evaluation software and regular driver updates to match new Windows versions. These tools are vital for users looking to design their own application-specific software. To give you some idea of how to test this spectrometer, we've assembled this example test setup. Today we'll be observing how this spectrometer performs and calculating its signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. SNR is important because it represents your level of measurement accuracy. So the higher your SNR, the higher your measurement accuracy. Today we'll go over SNR calculations based on our webinar on understanding spectrometer signal-to-noise ratio. So to go over the hardware for today, in addition to the C13985-20, we have a USB cable, a halogen source, two fiber optic cables, an iris, and a PC. We've had our light source plugged in and going through warm-up for about 30 minutes to ensure stable output. Here we're using a broadband halogen source. So taking our first fiber optic cable, Screw the SMA connector on the fiber optic to the corresponding connector on the light source. Included in each of our data sheets, we mention specifications for suitable optical fibers. For this spectrometer, we recommend using either a 400 micron or a 600 micron core diameter fiber with numerical aperture 0.22 and SMA connection to the spectrometer. It's important to make sure the fiber you use matches these specifications to be sure that you're optimizing throughput. With higher throughput comes higher signal collection and higher SNR. And it's this higher SNR that will allow you to have higher accuracy measurements. 
Now in the event that your light source saturates the spectrometer, even at the shortest integration time possible, we suggest using an iris to adjust how much light is seen by the spectrometer. Unlike adjusting current or voltage supplied to your light source, using an iris allows you to adjust the throughput to the spectrometer without affecting color temperature. So going back to our hardware, we'll connect the first fiber to the iris. Next, we'll take our second fiber and connect it to the iris as well. And then finally, we'll connect the second fiber to our microspectrometer module. And that is it, as far as our optical equipment goes. Moving on to electronics, all this spectrometer requires is USB bus power, making it ideal for portable implementations where a benchtop power supply may not be available. So, taking our USB cable, we'll connect the micro USB end to the spectrometer, the USB end to our PC, and that's it. We're able to move on to testing. When you first receive a spectrometer from Hamamatsu, depending on the model, it can come with the corresponding USB cable, CD with evaluation software, hardware instruction manual, and software instruction manual. We offer different types of software. In general, our software is intended for initial testing. Functions include setting parameters to control spectrometer measurement, applying dark subtraction to light measurements, and performing Gaussian fitting to plots. The files saved from our software are typically in CSV format, allowing for users to analyze data as they require. Now, if ever you find yourself in a position where you do not have access to the software you require, please reach out to our sales offices. So going back to testing, we'll start off by opening the appropriate software for the C13985-20. Once the microspectrometer module is connected and recognized by the PC, the software should allow for immediate startup. So we'll begin by monitoring output on the spectrometer. To do so, we'll go over to Tool tab and then we'll select Set Parameter. Here we'll see some options to toggle with. For now, we'll set the integration time to the minimum, 270 microseconds. The maximum integration time, as seen on the data sheet, is one second. When selecting an integration time, keep in mind that the higher the integration time, the higher the dark counts and the longer the measurement period, but also the higher the signal collection. So closing the tab, we'll open the shutter on our light source and we'll click this button to monitor output. Plotted, we see a maximum of 3800 A to D counts. With 12-bit resolution, the microspectrometer module is capable of outputting up to around 4,000 A to D counts. We can increase the A to D counts displayed either by increasing the integration time or increasing the opening on the iris. Again, higher A to D counts indicates higher signal collected, so therefore higher SNR. So now that we have an idea of the responsiveness of this spectrometer, we can move on to take measurements. We'll start off by taking a dark measurement to get a baseline idea of the dark noise levels. So going back to our set parameter, we'll set the number of scan counts to 100 and the number of average counts to 100 as well. Closing this tab, we'll now close the shutter on the light source and select this button to take a dark measurement. This data is pre-assigned based on the button selected for the measurement. And going back to the parameters that we just set, the data will reflect 100 columns of dark scans, with the leading column the average of all 100 scans. Looking at the gauge on the bottom right, we see that each scan is measured until a total of 100 is collected. With the gauge failed, our measurement is complete and we can move on to our light measurement. We'll change the parameters in this case. So going back to set parameters, we'll adjust this to have a scan count of 100 still, but in this case an average count of 1. Opening the shutter on our light source, we'll now select this button to take a light measurement. Again, looking at the gauge, we see 100 scans have been collected and the measurement is complete. We can now move on to data analysis. For this, we'll go to File and select Save Text Data. 
All right, so let's open up our data and see what we've recorded. If we look over to the first column, we'll see the wavelengths that were measured. Next to that, we'll see the dark data with each row representing an average of 100 dark scans. And then next to that, we'll have an average of all 100 light measurements. And then finally, we'll have all 100 light measurements available in their raw form for users to analyze as they require. So to calculate SNR, we'll recall that SNR equals the total signal divided by the total noise. So to calculate total signal, all we need to do is take the difference between the average and the dark. We'll then apply this for all of the wavelengths. To calculate the total noise, we'll then take the standard deviation for all 100 light measurements. And then just as before, we'll apply this to all of the wavelengths. So that finally, to calculate SNR, we'll simply take the total signal and then divide it by the total noise and apply it again to all of the wavelengths. So we can plot the data we've just calculated. If we put total signal and total noise on one axis and SNR on the other axis, we'll get the following. If we look at the total signal versus wavelength plot, we see the same figure that was displayed in the evaluation software originally. If we look at the SNR versus wavelength plot, we'll see that we get a maximum SNR of about 180 at the 720 nanometer mark. Now this plot shows us how SNR will vary depending on the incident wavelength of light. So to ensure that you have a maximum SNR, it's important that you're aware of the wavelength range of interest and how it corresponds to the spectrometer sensitivity. With a theoretical SNR of 300 for the spectrometer, we're not too far off target. Another plot we put together is the log noise versus the log signal, essentially the photon transfer curve. Now, if we look at this lower signal level, we'll see how the plots are dominated by the dark noise. However, as signal levels increase, we hit a point and the shot noise overcomes the dark noise and the system becomes more shot noise limited. So while it's ideal to operate in the shot noise limited regime of light levels, this is not always possible, but this plot shows the importance of knowing your light levels to know what noise floor in the spectrometer needs to be overcome and what light level is achievable for shot noise limited operation. These compact and smart designs open the door to new applications. We can see this spectrometer being used for applications such as colorimetry, fluorescence measurements, emission spectroscopy measurements, and absorption spectroscopy measurements. Are you looking to use this spectrometer or do you use this spectrometer for something different? Let us know in the comments below.